The scene of a horrific crime. Justice Bosiri picks through the remains of his grandmother's house. A group of vigilantes stormed this house after midnight and hacked Paris Bosiri to death. They said she was a witch and had put spells on the community. Belief in witchcraft is still strong in Western Kenya. Tales of sorceries and curses commonplace. Where renowned Joseph Amachi practices his craft. Amachi is a shaman or traditional healer. He communes with the ancestors and heals the spiritually sick. He claims he can discover and cure witches. But Amachi is skeptical. He says that the mob's target were not witches, but victims of a vendetta. God bless you. That film you just watched that uh, is so horrible. In 2013, people are still being stoned, bent, and killed because of the crime of witchcraft. I'm talking about 2013. And this was reported by the CNN showing that it is a world problem. How much more can a Christian live and ignore the fact that or the issue of witchcraft? The film you saw was about Kenya, but it has not, not to do only in Kenya, but in every idolatrous country. That is why as God has uh, stirred up my spirit to speak about witchcraft. You see the theme, it is witchcraft, the snare of Satan. Well, it means that as a Christian, apart from having the fundamental doctrines, you must also know what but the Bible says about witchcraft. It cannot be ignored. We cannot um, push it to the dark ages of, 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 how do you call it? We cannot push it in the dark ages because Europe now, according to reports, is the darkest continent. And when we talk about darkness, the Bible refers to the operations of Satan. And if witchcraft is associated to dark ages, then if 2013 Europe is viewed as a dark continent, then it means that witchcraft and the activities of satanic operations are still active. The Bible tells us to be vigilant because the devil, our adversary, prowls around seeking whom he may devour. But the Bible again says that we are not ignorant of his devices. As I researched and studied, on the history of witchcraft in the church, I saw that it came a time that it was ignored and said that there was nothing like that. It does not exist. But what I want to tell you is that even though they bent witches and uh, terminated them from the land in Europe, witches never left the land. You say why and how? The Bible says that King Saul killed every witch in the land when he became king. But when he was in trouble and there was no prophet to see, he asked to seek a witch. This means that though he had killed witches, he knew that witches still exist. Witches exist in Europe. Witches exist in Africa. Witches exist in Asia. Witches exist in every continent of the world. Because before idolatry, witchcraft existed existed so a christian will say now tell me what is witchcraft what does the bible say about witchcraft this is a theme that i would have preferred to preach in church but not on tv but as the lord has demanded whom am i to say that i'm not going to speak his word and as i struggled with him to ask why he's sending me because i I work with psychologists and psychiatrists and I work with those that uh, uh, operate on the human senses and, and so, but 
The Lord has sent me. And whom am I to say that I'm not going to speak? And as I was asking, why you want me to teach this on TV? He said, for the purpose of the gospel. Maybe in 2013, we are losing sight of the purpose of the gospel. But when Jesus stood in the temple to give out his first homily, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the good tidings and naming those that should hear the gospel. In Isaiah chapter 61, he says, to them that are bound in darkness, bound in darkness. In the same way, when the Lord called Paul, he said, because I've anointed him to go and do what? Deliver those that are bound in darkness. The purpose of the gospel is, is stated in the gospels. Jesus Christ, before he left on earth, he was sure to remind the disciples in Mark chapter 16. He said, go into the world and Preach the gospel. So anytime you hear about the gospel, it is not about religion and how much you would uh, count the crosses, how much you would put a big cross in your room, how much you would put a big cross in your, on your chest, a big Bible on your table. That is not the gospel. The gospel is for the liberation of the captive. The gospel is to set the oppressed free. The gospel is to bring light on them that sit in darkness. And for this purpose, the Lord wants us to speak about one of the snares of Satan, one of the vehicles through which the enemy keeps people bound in darkness and it is through witchcraft and that for that reason we are going to speak about witchcraft for we know that at the end of this message both the witch and the oh, victim of wizardry are going to be delivered in the mighty name of jesus they are showing the uh, ex uh, except that I, I put up in, in this film you will see that a, a, a wizard is confronting a pastor. It is a film in Ghana. And where would we have it in the Bible? Before you think that is only a thing of Ghana, you see that that one you see is a fetish priest. And this fetish priest dared to go to the house of God. And you see what he's doing. You see the things that he's put down. What is he doing? He's placing a curse. He went to place a curse on the church. My goodness. In 2013, the, look, the first curse threw the pastor down. <laughs> And th this is so funny and people are standing and watching as if they are watching a video. Don't come and tell me that these things do not exist. We are going to see from Bible if witchcraft really has power. Where is the source of the power and how believers can overcome the power of witchcraft. You see now the pastor is throwing the anointing oil. But I prefer to read the scripture. He's in it is in Numbers chapter 21. Please take your Bibles as you're watching the film. I'm reading Numbers chapter 21. It says that now Numbers chapter 22 verse 1 onwards. It says that the Israelites journeyed and encamped in the plains of Moab on the east side of the Jordan River at Jericho. And Balak, the king of Moab, son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. And Moab was terrified. Watch it. Mark it. Moab saw Israel coming and became afraid of the people, the nation that are trying to enter their territory. Oh my God, that is another, another revelation altogether. People trying to enter into Italy and then being cursed not to enter. My God, that is another preaching altogether. And Moab said, because the people are terrified, they were full of dread, because Israel was many, like the many immigrants that are coming from Nampedusa, and the land is terrified. And Moab was distressed and overcome with fear because of the Israelites. And Moab said to the elders of the Midianites, now will this multitude lick us all up? That is what Italians are saying. On the web, I saw somebody posting, can Italy become 
Islamic because 90% of those that are coming from Lampedusa are what? Islamic. But as you can see in this film, there is power in the name of Jesus to subdue the powers of the enemy. It is not me that is saying it. Jesus Christ said, I have given you all power and in my name you will trample upon serpents and scorpions. Serpents and scorpions has to do with witchcraft operation, divination, sorcery and all the powers that Satan uses to bind Christians and impede them from entering into their promised land like the Israelites. And so Balaam sent messengers to Balaam. Who was Balaam? He was a fortune teller like the fetish priest that was lying down whom somebody of course paid to go and curse the pastor. And so he sent for this fortune teller. That is why I don't want to hear when Christians say Balaam was a prophet. He was not a prophet of God. He was a fetish priest. He was a false prophet. He was, and every false prophet is a wizard. Maybe you have not heard it, but that is it. Every false prophet is a wizard. So, they sent messengers to Balaam, a fortune teller, son of Bear, at Bethel, which is by the Euphrates River, even to the land of the children of his people, to say to him, there is a people come out of Egypt, Behold, they covered the face of the earth, and they have settled down and dwelt opposite me. It is the number six um, that I want us to see. Number six, it says, This is the king of a nation who has seen some immigrants trying to come into his land. <laughs> and he says, These people have heard about them. I've heard that they are taking territories. In fact, when you read 21, 34, 35, Israel had already taken the territory of the king of uh, the Amorites and dwelt in Hezbon. And he had slew Og, the king of Basha, and taken his land. And so, of course, the king of Moab had all cause to do what? Be afraid. And he said, come, I beg you, curse on the line. Curse this people, for they are too powerful for me. In this scripture, we recognize that when somebody is not to overcome somebody, he turns to supernatural power to overcome. You and I know that we are talking about the kings of the Mesopotamia, the kings of this uh, big cities. They were not small cities. They had weapons of war. But Israel and their enemies knew that it does not matter how many weapons of war you have. When God is with the people, you cannot touch them. You cannot overcome them. So the king knew. He said Israel was many, but he knew that there was a God amongst the Israelites that was enabling them to conquer lands. And so he resorted to what? Witchcraft. Perhaps come and curse this people for me, for they are too powerful for me. Perhaps I may be able to defeat them and drive them from the land. The scripture is very clear. When you curse a believer, it means you would be able to defeat them. This is something that is very deep. He says, and he tells the sorcerer, for I know that whom you bless is blessed. And whom you curse is cursed. This is serious. It means there are people living on earth who have authority to choose to destroy who they want and who they don't want. Now, if this thing is not true and it was just mere words, God wouldn't have sent his angel because in the recount from 22 through 25, you would recognize that God started to fight for those that were trying to place a curse on Israel. God impeded the prophet, the witch, the wizard himself by speaking through his donkey. Anytime you try to place a curse on a Christian, 
you are setting yourself in for a trouble. For God fights for his people. You see, when God dwells in the midst of his people, touch not my anointed. For whom God blesses, no one curses. If it is not true that Balaam's curse can be effective on Israel, God would not have fought and sent his angel to impede the path of their false prophet. In the name of Jesus, I pray that the angel of God will cause every false prophet sitting on a horse that have been paid by your enemies to curse you, to topple with their horses and fall down in the name of Jesus. That is why the prophet says, speak a word, it shall not stand. Declare your strategy of war, it shall be broken, for God is with us. What was he saying? He was saying that in his days, apart from declaring strategies of war, one of the strategies of war was speaking words and this word were what we call curses these are curses that were sent to impede Israel the king did not want Israel to come and take the land which he thought belonged to him a Christian is fighting for his healing a Christian is fighting for his education you see this takes me to the book of uh, Mark Jesus was going to a land and the demon territorial spirits in the land started to call Jesus' boat to topple. Because if Jesus arrives in the land, he is going to cast them out. This is the mandate that Jesus gave to every believer. In Mark chapter 16, you turn your Bibles with me. Jesus was not speaking to only the apostles. He was speaking to everyone that would be a believer. He told the apostles, go into the world and preach the gospel. Mark chapter 16 verse 15. For he who believes and trusts and relies upon the gospel and him whom it sets forth, and shall be baptized from the penalty of death. But he who does not believe will be damned. It means if you believe, Jesus comes to take your place and fight your battles for you. If you don't believe, whatever they throw at you, if you don't believe what Jesus is saying, will come on you. That is what he says. You shall be condemned means uh, when you stand before the judges, you, they, would, they can do whatever they want to you. Because you have nobody to plead your case for. So you suffer your own punishment. And then he says that. And these are the miraculous signs that would accompany the gospel. Therefore, anytime the gospel is preached, this should accompany the preacher of the gospel. He says, in my name, they would drive out demons. The Israelites were commanded to drive out the Moabites. And the Moabites resisted them through curses. The gospel today is being preached to drive out sin from the lives of people. And demons are using media philosophy, as Paul calls it in the book of Corinthians, to tell people it is okay to sing because the devil will do everything to retain his territory. They are saying homosexuality is not sin. Lesbianism is not sin. Fornication, oh God will forgive you. But here we realize that the enemy of Israel used a weapon of war and it was the lust of the flesh. It was sex. It was abominable sex, and it was sex in idolatry. Many believers are being bound by sex, but a few would attribute this to a witch or a wizard. In a vision, I was praying for somebody bound by homosexuality, lesbianism, and then the witch appeared to me and he said, I am the one that placed that, uh, 
that uh, how do you call it crookedness in the person in Europe we've been told that we are born homosexual we are born lesbians we are born thieves that is the truth it is in the blood but the Bible says that Jesus Christ sent his disciples to go out into the world and drive out all the demons that are impeding the people of God from obtaining their blessing stay with me next week and we're going to see how Balaam Play, what cares Balaam placed on Israel and how Israel was set free and, and, and related to our modern day. God bless you. God bless you. Sponsor a child from Ghana. Please call the number on the screen and send your monthly donation of 10 to 20 euros per month to the Christian Faith Preparatory School through Echo Bank Ghana Limited Takuradi branch Catherine's account 1601237470114 Swift code Echo Gag E C O C G H A C E vediamo tutti voi a adottare un bambino a distanza al Christian Faith Preparatory School e fie come Echo Bangana Limited Sacradi conto corrente 1601237470114 Swift code Echo Gag